My country tis of thee. Go Bulls! Sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. The tailgating had its usual green and gold flair, but this time with a little red, white, and blue emphasis attached. Say go Bulls! Go Bulls! Go Bulls! That's close enough. <laughs> South Florida fans of all ages were ready to celebrate Salute to Service Day. F-L-O-R-I-D-A, South Florida, South Florida. They were also anxious to see the 17th ranked Bulls take on Houston, but not before a special nod to military and first responders. That includes one member of the Bulls family. Junior linebacker Anthony Biko spent five years in the Marines, a former air support specialist in Afghanistan. He's a Bay Area native and graduate of Bloomingdale High School. Regularly, he leads the Bulls on the field carrying the American flag. Special stuff for any game and for any season, but this has not been just any season for South Florida as they carried a 12-game winning streak, the longest in the country, into their game against Houston. This is the best start in program history for USF, 7-0, 17th in the country. However, Houston knows a thing or two about beating top 25 teams. They had six in a row. The Bulls weren't taking anything for granted as they knew the Cougars' resume, a team that almost beat Memphis, one of three ranked teams in the AAC just a week earlier. The Bulls' defense was buttoned down and would actually shut the Cougars out in the first half. Linebacker Augie Sanchez was closing in on the school record for career tackles. Always glad to help put the ball in the hands of the Bulls' record-setting offense. Flared out, it's caught by McCants. He picks his way forward, gets by a couple of men. McCants took it all the way to the end zone, but they blew the whistle on him. And here is the running play, and it busts wide open. And Darius Tice gets to the 10, and he's down there with a first down. Pushing the pile in, touchdown USF. Bulls are on the board, and a two-yard run by Dearness Johnson. Charlie Strong's team has protected a lot of leads this year by forcing turnovers. The Bulls lead the country in interceptions, but one way or another, they find ways to get the ball back. And Houston's ready to go. Only rushed three that time for De'Ara King, and he finds Bonner down the seam. To the 28-yard reception is a fumble by Mobile Carr for Houston, and it's recovered by Devin Abraham for USF, and the Bulls have it back. The turnover helped South Florida send Houston scoreless to the locker room at halftime. The Bulls were on a record-setting run, having scored 30 or more for 24 straight games. But points were at a premium, and Houston got some on the first drive of the second half. King going deep again, same situation, and his time walk makes the catch, and he gets the touchdown. There was no panic for South Florida. They had dominated the first half everywhere but on the scoreboard. And their first possession of the second half would produce a touchdown as well. The 13th play drive was a piece of offensive artwork. Quarterback Quentin Flowers was six for six throwing and seven runs produced a major chunk of the real estate, including the touchdown. And now it's Flowers, Quentin Flowers, touchdown. Flowers already owns the USF record for rushing touchdowns in a career, but perhaps the most important thing he brings to the table is leadership. The Bulls follow this senior's experience. The AAC's Offensive Player of the Year from 2016 had given the Bulls the lead again, but Houston proved to be a stubborn challenge. The Cougars had been a strong road team and were trying to make it three out of four away from home. Late in the quarter, Malba Carr, who had only 11 rushing yards in the first half, started to find some running room. His touchdown tied the score, and as the fourth quarter started, the rain fell harder with it all even at 14. Three wide receivers, Flowers fakes the handoff. Valdez Scantling is there, and he makes the catch inside the five yard line, first and goal bowl. 
There may not be a team in the country you would want with the ball needing a fourth quarter score more than South Florida. The Bulls had averaged 41 and a half points per game with one of the most electrifying offenses in the nation through the first seven contests. And they weren't gonna let a little weather spoil their party. Quentin Flowers gave them yet another lead with his second touchdown run of the game. But there was still a lot of football to be played. The Cougars had plenty of time on their side. Now they had to make use of it against a USF defense that had shut them out in the first half. But quarterback De'Ara King found a way to tie it for a third time in a dramatic American Athletic Conference struggle to the finish line. And with under two minutes to play, it looked like the Bulls would be the first to cross it. Kicker Emilio Nadelman entered the game third in the country in scoring, and a 30-yarder was a chip shot. Good snap, good hold, has the distance, and the Bulls have regained the lead with one minute and 46 seconds to go. King in an empty backfield looking to throw, he's sacked. A flag comes down, which I think will be on Houston. The ball back at the 37-yard line. Clock stopped for a moment, 107 to go. Fourth and 24. He's got the football, rolling to the right. Pressure coming, winds up and throws it long downfield into a crowd, and it is caught by Houston. First down at the 33-yard line. Courtney Lark with a miracle catch. And King with a game-winning run. With 11 seconds left, it was the first time in the game that Houston had the lead. A stunning loss for a team and a fan base that has grown used to winning. The first time the Bulls had lost in 372 days. They handled the disappointment with class. And what's important now is that they learn from it and rebound with a trip to Yukon, their next hurdle.